My first job actually was movie related. I was 14 years old and I was hired to be the entire crew on a commercial that was shooting in Baton Rouge for Franklin Printing Press. They brought in a filmmaker from Texas. I got paid $50 in cash. The guy was a little surprised that I was his crew, but I had already worked enough to be able to know what needed to be done and to do it for him. So by the end of the day, he was very happy. At age 26, he was the youngest ever to win the grand prize at the Cannes Film Festival. His directorial debut, Sex, Lies, and Videotape, turned on critics and audiences alike. And film offers came from Robert Redford and Sidney Pollack. His current film, Kafka, is different from his first pictures you can get. If I look at the first four movies, you know, the success of Sex, Lies was a surprise. The failure of Kafka was not. King of the Hill, I think it's a very accessible movie. Who's to say if it had come out at a different time and we'd figured out how to sell it, if that might have worked? The underneath wasn't going to work. And by the time we finished shooting, I had hatched the plan to go and make Schizopolis. So I was using that time on the set when I should have been thinking about what I was doing, kind of fantasizing about, I want to be in Baton Rouge with a crew of five people, like making something, using the same sort of methodology that I used when I started making films. What's interesting about King of the Hill and the Underneath being made by Universal through their indie arm was, I ended up coming away from that frustrated with myself more than frustrated with the studio. Casey Silver was running Universal. He was some that I had a very good relationship with. He later hired me to do Out of Sight. Those first nine years, those first seven films, there's a lot of backwards and forwards, a step forward, two steps back, some mistakes, but again, very necessary. Filmmakers now don't get to make the mistakes that I made, and I needed those mistakes. I feel bad. Everybody's expected now to emerge just full-blown right out of the gate. I needed those early movies to sort of figure out what I was up to. And the Oscar goes to Steven Soderbergh for Traffic. Uh, there were a couple of things that I had in mind that I wanted to do, and I think instinctually I understood I wasn't ready to enter that arena yet. Directing a, a studio movie with movie stars in it is like standing in the wash of a jet engine for four months. I, I didn't know enough about my own craft yet, I felt. George Clooney and Steven Soderbergh are here. Last year, they re-teamed for the blockbuster remake of Ocean's Eleven. In addition, they've also had their own successful production company, Section 8. Together, they have developed and produced several films, including Insomnia and Far From Heaven. The idea is, if you're going to do those kind of genre films like that, at least those are the kind, if they're successful, that you can still be proud of. I really like entertainment. And in the same world, it's for ourselves, I suppose, just trying to raise the bar and just keep doing things push it. I'm still at an age where I, I feel like if I dedicated myself to some other art form, I would like to see if I could become good at something else. Since I'm my own cinematographer and sometimes my own editor, I've gotten better, I hope, at just going on my gut and not looking back. That, that actually when I treat filmmaking more like a sport in which I'm reacting in real time, I make better decisions. If you give me more time, I don't make good decisions. I actually tend to make them worse. 20 years later, you know, things have sort of flipped, and I'm much happier with where I am as a filmmaker and much less happy with the way that the studio system is functioning. We couldn't get a domestic distributor to give us six million dollars, which is another indication of where the business is going. I mean, this is sort of what we tried to do with Section 8, was to try and bring interesting filmmakers into the studio system and protect them. But unfortunately, the only way a studio is going to allow that kind of freedom to a young filmmaker is if the budget are low and unfortunately the most profitable movies for the studios are the big movies. If you're just interested in telling stories then go where you feel like you can tell your stories. I look at it and just go my job as a filmmaker is to adapt. If I don't adapt I die. That's the way nature works. So instead of spending my time going why didn't more people go see side effects what I should be spending my time doing is this 10-hour television thing that I'm doing, which I'm really enjoying. When I made all my big speeches four years ago, I had sort of conflated my frustration with the movie business in the United States with directing. 
And when I got back on the Nick, I realized, no, I actually like directing. I just don't like that version of the business. A few years back, I got a call from an agent. He said, look, uh, will you come see this small independent film the client of mine made? It's been making the festival circuit. It's been getting a really good response, but no distributor will pick it up. The film is called Memento. So the lights come up and I go, all right, it's fucking, it's over. It's over. Nobody will buy this film and release it. This is insane. Well, fortunately, the people who financed the movie love the movie so much, they formed their own distribution company and made $25 million. And so when the opportunity came up with Logan Lucky to eliminate all the aspects of it that I didn't like, being in the movies again suddenly seemed a lot more compelling. Because I was reading, you said you may never go back to traditional cameras. I mean, is this, would you like to use iPhones again in the future? Is that the idea? Yeah, I'm planning to next week. I felt this movie would be well served by my ability to put a lens anywhere I wanted in a matter of seconds. And I look at the movie now, I don't think it'd be as good if I'd had to shoot it in a conventional way. And of course, because like, you're teaming up with the Moonlight Screenwriter for the next one. High Flying High Flying Bird. It's about a sports agent who proposed this is a restructuring of a sports league, and the idea is considered threatening, and external forces mobilize pretty quickly. So it's a really interesting piece.